Today we are making a video on Arch Linux 2023.05 edition which is a May edition. Here is the boot menu of uh, Arch Linux. So let's uh, quickly launch the Arch Linux live boot. It's going to take like a maximum of uh, 1 minute to load up the desktop layout or minimum like uh, 30 to 40 seconds because that's the usual timing of uh, every Linux distro which will take uh, that much of time to load up the desktop layout. And I forgot to mention that I'm running it as a virtualization which is uh, VMware with 80 GB of hard disk, 4 GB of RAM and with two processors running right now. So another thing is that I will be posting two videos daily without uh, missing any day. So I already posted uh, a content or a video in the YouTube. So if you want to check that out, you can check that out after watching this video. And again, it's taking a lot of time. Usually it should boot up in a few seconds, but uh, it is taking some time. So let's wait for a few more seconds. And this is a uh, GUI Arch Linux. So I'm going to show you how to download the GUI or you can just uh, type it in the Google search engine or some search engine or search bar. Just type the Arch Linux GUI and you should be getting the latest Arch Linux GUI. So this is a May edition which is a 2023.05 edition which I already mentioned. So it is the latest uh, version of the Arch Linux. So we should be seeing our desktop layout completely loaded in a few more seconds. It took like uh, roughly 40 seconds. Usually in the time it should be loaded but uh, it took a lot of time this time. So we don't see any mouse pointer also. I don't know is it uh, good or not. Let's wait a few more seconds. We don't even see a mouse pointer right now. Just a black screen. And here is our mouse pointer. Maybe the latest versions uh, of the Linux distro will take a lot of time, I guess. And you should be seeing a mouse pointer with a highlighter because I set it up in my uh, screen recording. Screen recording software. So the mouse pointer working properly. So let's check out the some of the features. First, quickly let's quickly change the display resolution because it looks pretty odd. Let's go to the applications, uh, settings, display. And I choose the XFC desktop environment. So I'm, my monitor is like a 1920 to 1080 with a 16 is to 9 ratio. So let's change it. If you can't see the text size or the font or the icons properly, you can change the glow settings uh, by going to the applications and uh, go to the settings and uh, go to the appearance and go to the settings again and change the window scaling to 2x and you should be having a bold font a bold icons uh, you can properly see in the things so for me uh, it looks pretty good so i don't want to change it so here is the mirrors of a reflector simple version 3.3.1 uh, so you can choose the mirrors I'm using a VPN so it choose it as a Singapore so you can choose anything you want so let's first check out the system monitor and see how much of resources are consuming right now the XFC has a task manager as the system monitor so it's almost a 1 GB right now and CPU is also going crazy almost a 50% these are all the process running right now as you can see there is not a stable uh, graph in the CPU there is a high peak low peak so you can't properly say how uh, resources are consuming right now you can just uh, uh, assume the memory uh, RAM usage because CPU is going low and high so let's check out the some of the information of the task manager 1.5.5 is the latest version I guess so let's try open the terminal and type in some of the information let's type in the command which is inxi-sv8 this is the command which will grab complete distro information i'm going to show you uh, the official website and the downloading process after the watching all this information it's uh, arch linux iso under system kernel is a uh, 6.2.13 it's a 64-bit architecture 
try to ignore the background noise and it's a 64-bit architecture compiler gcc version is a 12.2.1 desktop is a xfce 4.18.1 the latest version of xfce is a 4.18.4 and gtk version is a 3.24.36 and xfwm version is a 4.18.0 Lite DM version is a 1.32.0, distro is Arch Linux, machine is a VMware, and BIOS Phenox version is a 6.0. I already mentioned that I am running it on a virtualization which is a VMware, so it says as a VMware. The RAM is almost a 1 GB of 4 GB of RAM, and uh, this is my CPU information. If you want to go through all the information, here is the video. Just pause the video. So the graphics VMW GFX version is 2.20 Display is X11 Server is XORG version 21.1.8 XVLAND 23.1.1 XFWM 4.18.0 So these are all the available resolutions or the monitor resolutions to change So let's go to the audio side and uh, ELSA version is here Jack version is 1.9.22, Pi Fire version is a 0.3.70, Pulse Audio version is 16.1. So let's scroll it down and uh, find other information. And uh, it says 80 GB because I choose the 80 GB of hard disk for my VMware. So let's quickly scroll it down. There's a pretty, pretty lot of uh, repos. So let's go down and check out other information. Process running right now are 272, uptime is a 4 minute, init system D version is a 253, shell bash version is a 5.1.16, compiler GCC version is 12.2.1, INXI version is 3.3.26. So let's type in the uh, another command which will give the same information as the above but in a short form. Let's type in INXI-B. So let's type in INXI dash capital G. So let's type in NeoFetch. Let's hope NeoFetch is uh, pre installed. NeoFetch is also available. So let's type in uh, cat etc forum slash issue Arch Linux headstop. Headstop is also pre installed. This Arch Linux GUI has everything, I guess. They pre-installed everything like a NeoFetch uh, and a Headstop and INXI2. So the RAM is almost a 672 MB in the Headstop, but it uh, in the GUI it's going to say like a, almost like a 1 GB. So tasks are like a 66. So this is the information. Let me close it and let me show you the official website and uh, downloading process let's open the firefox web browser firefox web browser is the default web browser for the almost every linux distro it's going to take like a 15 to 20 seconds to load up the browser and let's check out the panel information here which is a 4.18 i guess 4.18.3 our firefox web browser is launched so let's check out the information also of the firefox 112 latest version so let's type in the search term which is arch linux this is the search term you need to type in for the website and this is the official website archlinux.org so let's go to the download so this is the uh, not the gui version this is just a basic version uh, there is no desktop in it so if you want to install desktop it uh, it's clearly up to you to choose whatever the desktop environment you want to install so the current release is a 2023.05.3 6.2.13 is the kernel which i already showed you in order to download just uh, click on the mirrors here worldwide and here is the iso file as you can see iso file which is 852 MB so if you want the with the uh, Arch Linux with a GUI just type in the uh, Arch Linux with a GUI or just a GUI there are plenty of options available Arch Linux GUI you will get the older version ALG 
I found it in the source folder, so let me show you that too. So people will be struggling with the latest version to how to download the latest version because there are always a older version in the Arch Linux UI. In order to get the latest version of uh, Arch Linux, you need to type in like a C A L A M, and here is the uh, ISO file, or just type in this uh, URL. This is the search term calam arch installer.iso so you will get uh, options if you are going to install you will get an options of a desktop environment so as you can see there is a latest version which is 2023.05 which is uh, this version which I am using right now so this is the arch linux with a GUI the file size is around like a 2.5 GB uh, the non desktop version or the non GUI version will be of 800 and 900 MB like that. So the with GUI you will be having like a 2.5 GB. So this is the file size. Let me show you the downloading process also. So this is the Arch Linux which will give you the latest version. See the other Arch Linux GUI will be having a older version like a 2022 version. So here is the latest version 2023.05. So that's the process of downloading the uh, Arch Linux with a GUI. Uh, people always ask me to give you the download link. Uh, I can't give you the download link. I'm just showing you how to download the Arch Linux. So you don't need to uh, have the Arch Linux uh, link. I can't provide the link because sometimes YouTube will uh, trigger it as a uh, phishing site. So that's the reason I'm not going to give that. Calamaras installer is a 3.2.62. I'm going to show you the desktop environment available with the uh, Arch Linux GUI. So again, this is a basic and a common installation steps in the Linux distro. There is nothing complicated. First, you need to choose the language. Click on next. Location. I'm using a VPN, so it says as a Singapore. So the you can choose the drop down menu or you can directly choose the uh, map click on next there is a customization here you can, you can customize it on your own if you want click on next after you choose it keyboard layout choose your keyboard layout it automatically gives the keyboard layout I'm choosing English United States and default if you want you can test it here click on next you need to choose your partitions and be careful while choosing this you need to choose your hard disk first and go with the installation if you want to delete the current operating system, choose the RS disk. It's going to delete uh, all the files like uh, movies, videos, everything, media files, all the things. And even the current operating system, if you're using a Windows 11, it's going to delete the Windows 11 and it's going to install the Arch Linux. So be careful and you need to be having an idea of what you're doing here. So if you choose the manual partitioning, it will give you the option of a dual boot like uh, custom partitions. You need to create your partitions on your own. So that's the option for that. If you want to encrypt your system, you can provide the password in the both the boxes, which should be same, and uh, you should be uh, having an encryption. I don't want the encryption, so I'm not going to choose it. And the bootloader location, uh, it automatically gives the best option. If you want to do not install a bootloader location, you can do that, and uh, you can do that later after the installation. So it's clearly up to you to customize. So after choosing all these things, click on next and here you have a lot of desktop uh, people who want to uh, install uh, a desktop environment on their own you can go with the 800 mb of uh, arch linux without a gui or a non-desktop one uh, people who don't know how to do that you can just download this iso file and choose uh, your desktop environment here there's almost uh, almost every linux desktop environment so no need to worry so this is the easiest option uh, people who are pro you uh, go can, can go with the uh, non desktop version uh, people who want just uh, easy installation steps you can just go with this uh, type of uh, iso file of arch linux which i already showed uh, how to download so there is like a, almost a 10 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9 desktop environments almost the famous desktop environments which is xfc mat plasma gnome cinnamon let me go through all these things here is the wallpaper you can choose anything this is a gnome version it has a dock like a mac os cinnamon budgie deepin i3 window manager open box 
If you ask me which desktop environment is good, so I'm going to say some of the options like XFCE, Matte, Plasma, Gnome, Cinnamon and others are like Budgie is the worst uh, in my opinion. It's my opinion, It's it should be good for you but in my opinion it is the worst one. Budgie, Deepin and uh, this both are worst and Openbox and i3 you can test it. I have no problem. The worst option is a deep in and budgie for me. So it should be different for you. So that was my opinion. So after choosing your uh, desktop environment, click on next. So these are the packages. If you want to install the packages, you can go through all these things. I'm going to skip it because I, uh, it's going to take a lot of time to make the video. You need to provide your username and password. You don't need to provide the actual username, but uh, provide the strong password. For the sake of the video, I'm choosing the simple password because I don't want to make it lengthy. If everything is going good, you should be seeing a tick mark uh, beside the box. So if you want to use the same password for the administrator, just check the button. If you don't want, you can uh, provide the password and write down the password because if you forget, it should be a painful for uh, uh, using this Linux distros. So always write it down or just remember the password. Even if you remember, just write it down somewhere because nothing is going to uh, wasteful there if you forget it should be helpful uh, if you forget it should be pain and uh, you should be scratching your head for the password that that's a terrible thing so it's always a better option to write it down so after this you need to click on next and it will show you the summary of what you choose in the previous steps and uh, what will happen after clicking on install uh, it's going to take like a maximum of uh, 20 minutes or a minimum of 5 to 8 minutes completely depends on the Linux system, depends on the system resources or the good end PC or a low end PC completely depends on that. So no one can say exact term, uh, time of how much it takes. So that's the rough timing. So that's the installation process. Again after you satisfied with the live boot then go with the installation. Don't just uh, download and install it just use the linux distro uh, on your own with uh, using like a live boot use it for roughly two to three hours uh, and don't try to save it anything in the live boot because uh, after you reboot it's going to erase everything so just use it like a normal pc uh, just use the live boot like a normal user and uh, after you satisfied without a bugs and errors you can go with the installation so that's a tip from me because I don't want you to ruin your PC, that's the main thing. Uh, so that's the reason I'm going to repeat it again and again. So that's the installation process. Let me close it. So other than that, there is nothing changed in the 2025, uh, 2023 edition, 0.05 edition. So these are all the uh, available apps. So whatever the application uh, desktop environment you choose, you will get all the applications uh, from that. So the latest news or the release note from the 2023.0 for Arch Linux is just a kernel version. There is nothing more than that. You can go to their website and check their version. If you want to use the Arch Linux with a GUI, just uh, follow all the steps which I showed in the previous uh, time or in the beginning of the video. That's the steps. So I think that's the end of the video. We don't need to show anything because uh, all the applications will be different in uh, whatever the desktop environment you choose. So let's go to the task manager and check out the resources. As you can see XFC is a lightweight desktop environment. So it's still the 1.2 GB. Even if you have like a 2 GB of RAM, you should be good to use this Arch Linux distro. Uh, people who are already pro in using the Arch Linux, no need to uh, download this. Uh, you can directly install on your own uh, desktop environment so people who are uh, like a normal user or just a beginner you can just download the ISO file and use the Arch Linux like a, uh, with any desktop environment like nine desktop environments are available so you can choose any desktop environment so that's the end of the video I already posted another video so if you want to check that out you can check that out after watching this video again thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did hit the thumbs up button it helps make a good content for you other than that i'll see you in tomorrow's video peace out